Welcome students to the session on a sociological understanding of religion. Religion has always played a significant role in society. It has also been a crucial aspect of human experience and culture throughout history, influencing how people respond to their surroundings. The vital role played by religion in society made sociologists study religion as a subject matter. Sociologists view religion as a social institution as well as a belief system. Religion as a belief system affects how people think and perceive the world. While religion as a social institution organizes social action around the practices and beliefs people develop to deal with existential issues. Religion as an institution with a social structure plays a crucial role in the process of socialization. As an institution, religion is ubiquitous and pervasive institution. It connects people to spirituality and occasionally moral ideals. It is a collection of organized ideas and activities that may be found in many cultural systems and world views. One of the main goals of sociology is to develop scientific knowledge of religion. Even the development of sociology can be traced back to the attempts made by Europeans in the 19th century to address the religious crisis that trembled western society in the transformation process that happened during the Industrial Revolution and Enlightenment. The majority of the great European thinkers of the classical age of sociology, including founding fathers of sociology, Comte, Marx and Durkheim, attempted to develop some sort of logical scientific paradigm to replace the religious roots of Western society. With this background, in this model, we will be discussing what is religion, basic components of religion, structural aspects of religion and also the functions of religion. To start with, we can see what is religion. Both the word and the idea of religion are open to several interpretations. There are numerous definitions of religion which significantly focus on the core ideas like a collection of beliefs and related behaviors that are institutionalized or personal. Worshipping a supernatural deity, goddesses or god. A set of convictions centered on a cause or principle. And the last characteristic is confirmity. The word religion was first used in the 13th century and initially it was used in the context of a state of the word religious. Etymologically, the term is derived from the root word religio which means respect for what is sacred. And also from the another word, religare, which reflects the meaning to bind in the sense of an obligation or to restrain. The term religion describes various systems of belief and practice that define what people considered sacred or spiritual. Another factor in determining what qualifies as a religion is the worship of sacred as opposed to profane things or occasions. When something is profane, it refers to something ordinary or commonplace, whereas anything sacred is unique, unusual or holy. Examples of sacred items and events include religious texts like Bible, Quran, Torah, Vedas. Totems or symbolic items like cross, flag, sculpture or also example for it. Special events or observations like Christmas, Yom Kippur, Diwali are also example for sacred things. While defining religion, we can start with Emil Durkheim, a classical sociologist who defines religion as a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things, that is to say, things set apart and forbidden. According to him, religion is found in all societies, whether it is primitive, medieval or modern. But the simplest form of religion was found in primitive societies. In his work on elementary forms of religious life, he argued that primitive societies have the elementary form of all the institutions and the same way religion too, where other influences keep those societies unaffected. Detailed discussion on the works of Durkheim on religion can be dealt with in the next module 
on intellectual theories of religion. In sociological studies of religion, the interaction between society and religion is the focal point. Religion offers the predominant framework for the organization of social life and provides a sense of purpose, values and principles to govern social interactions and activities. As one of the prominent institutions of society, religion has specific functions and roles to play in the society. Religion influences as well as being influenced by some aspects of society. Several facets of life may be independent of religion and vice versa. Now we can start with basic components of religion. While discussing religion, sociologists make use of the terms experience, belief and rituals of religion in a distinguished sense. Barkan and Greenwood elaborated that the conviction or sense that one has in connection with the divine is referred to as having a religious experience. While praying or meditating, people may experience this kind of communion. Religious beliefs are precise notions that adherence of a certain faith regard as true such as the notions that Jesus Christ was the son of God and that souls reincarnate. Even the creation of stories one can find in different religions is also based on religious beliefs. Religious rituals or actions or procedures that members of a specific organization are either expected to perform or obligate to do such as bar mitzvah or confessing sins. In the sociological context, religion is considered to resolve around four essential components or core aspects which are dealt by Shankar Rao as follows. First one is belief in supernatural forces. Belief is the basis of religion and we have seen it as discussed by Durkheim. The belief is over the supernatural or superhuman forces. The belief can be in one force or the God or the Almighty and such belief is called monotheism. In contrast, Belief in several kinds of forces and gods and goddesses is known as polytheism. Man's adjustment to the supernatural forces. Man believes and accepts the supremacy of God. As an expression of subordination, man worships God by means of prayers, hymns and other acts. The disrespect and negligence to God and are believed to have the consequences of the disaster and to avoid it and man engages in endless attempts to adjust himself to supernatural or divinity. The third point is acts defined a righteous, sinful, sacred and profane. In religious practices there is a demarcation between sacred and profane. The righteous acts are considered sacred and they are encouraged. While some acts are considered sinful and profane, they are denounced. These acts are structured as religious codes or standards. For instance, the righteous and the sinful are central to the ideas of heaven and hell. Some methods of salvation. Every religion has its own explanation regarding salvation, which is considered to be the ultimate object of the follower of the particular religion. Apart from this, there are also a few other aspects that claim sociological significance like mythology, supernatural and sacred concepts, practices, rituals, repeated activities, social organization or a religious community. The basic components and core aspects together constitute religion. Now we can see the structural aspects of religion. Religion as a system is a combination of both belief and ritual. Any social institution will have two important aspects. One is structure and another one is function. Now we can see the structural part of the social institution, religion. Following this, we can also discuss the functions of religious institutions for a full-fledged understanding of it. The structure is what over which the entire system exists. As per Sankar Rao, Religion has the following basic structures. To start with, the theologies and creeds. Every religion will have its own theology. 
the organized account that religious authorities develop to demonstrate how man relates to his God and the universe. All religious faiths have a set of doctrines, dogmas, articles of values and ideologies that they uphold. Theologies and creeds are ways in which these things are organized and rationalized. A creed can be a philosophy, a personal collection of views or a formal doctrine or system of beliefs for a church or religious organization. It includes stories related to the creation of the universe and the word comes from the Latin word credo which means I believe. It was initially only used to refer to Christianity but by the 17th century it was being used to refer a wide range of religions. Theology is the body of ideas and principles that comprise the church or the temple. Christian and biblical stories on the origin and creation of the world and man and Hindu ideas of the trinity concerning creation, preservation or protection and destruction are part of it. Ceremony and the ritual. A ritual or ceremony is a set of recognized behaviors performed to achieve a certain goal. In general, rituals are regulated formal social ceremonies that frequently occur in religious settings in a sacred context. These rituals serve as a means of communicating details about the culture and its members. For the purpose of interacting with the supernatural, every religion has its own set of rituals, ceremonies and practices. Ritual conveys respect and adoration for God as well as obedience and tribute. There are many different types of rituals including sacrifices, sacred music, plays, dances, hymns, prayers, feasting, fasting, reading scriptures, writing, festivals, etc. All religions use rituals and ceremonies, but they do so in diverse ways, which can bring emotional unity and security to people. Religious rituals can be simple or intricate, and they differ throughout religions. Rituals and ceremonies are not limited to religion alone. Now we can see what is symbolism in religion. Religious symbolism is significant throughout. Symbol serves as replacements for or representations of things or circumstances. These could be verbal or tangible. A religious symbols enable a person to identify with his or her fellow humans. Hence, it foster a feeling of social cohesion. A symbol may frequently end up standing in for the entire group and its culture rather than just the specific event or thing to which it was first applied. For example, the cross stands for Christianity, the crescent for Islam and the swastik for Hinduism. Typically, these symbols are emotion charged. Now we can see what is this religious codes. Any social institution comes into practice by providing the norms and values for the society. Likewise, religion provides a body of rules prescribed by a particular religion for its own followers to observe and follow as the religious code. The code specifies both acceptable and unacceptable behavior. Acceptable behavior is associated with rewards whereas undesirable or unacceptable behavior will end up in punishment to the individuals. Codes of religion can also be interpreted as the attainment of salvation or going to hell or heaven after death. For instance, Buddhism emphasizes Asthamarg, Eightfold Path, Jainism on Three Ratnas, Three Jeweled Path, Islam on Shariat, Muslim Personal Law, Hinduism on Manushmriti, Christianity on Ten Commandments and so on are some of the religious codes. Now we can see what is religious sects. According to sociology, a sect is a religious organization that forms a relatively small portion of a much larger social system. It is a specific kind of religion that stands out from the rest because of its split from 
a more established institution. The non-conforming belief clash with those of the greater group and because of this they are categorized as such as the sect. In a sect, the hierarchy of power is loosely organized and leaders are often selected by the group members who usually need to be more trained. Sects are typically non-conformist, protesters and antagonistic in association with other religious organizations though less so than cults. According to Max Weber, marginalized groups are where sects are most likely to form. In the end, they might decide to quit the mainstream church or the church might expel them. Over time, they will develop their own official hierarchy, creed and name as well as become a new denomination. Quite likely, the sect of today will become the church of tomorrow. A sect eventually reconciles with society at large and transforms into its own church. Afterwards, a new generation of members could leave it and start a different sect by breaking away from it. Almost all religious groups will have sects. For instance, Christianity has two main sects like Catholicism and Protestantism and several other smaller sects like Puritanism, Prebesterianism, Lutheranism, Calvinism, etc. Similarly, Buddhism has Mahayanism and Hinayanism, Jainism has the Swadambras and Dihambras, Islam has the Sunnis and the Siyas, Hinduism has the sects like Saivates and Vaishnavates and Shaktiyas on the one hand and Dvaita, Advaita and Vishwaidya on the other hand. Festivals are part and parcel of any religion. Festivals connect people as a social get-together where the religious rituals are performed collectively in the form of prayers, processions, fasting and feasting, offerings, chanting of hymns and singing devotional songs etc. The festival's main aim is to confirm the faith and fidelity of its devotees, thereby encouraging emotional solidarity and social unity. They usually clean their homes for festivals and wear jewelry and ritual clothing. Parties and feasts are frequently planned and greetings, treats and gifts are exchanged. Some popular festivals of Hindus are Yugadi, Shankaranti, Navratri, Vijay Dasami, Rama Navami, Krishna Jayanti, Deepavali, Ganesh Chadurti, Naga Panjami, Gauri Puja, Rishi Panjami, Guru Purnima, Raksha Bandhan, Shivaratri and Holi. Likewise, we can see the festivals of Christians including Easter, Advent Sunday, All Saints Day, Ascension Day, Christmas Day, Fani, Good Friday, Lent and Ash Wednesday, etc. Muslims celebrate Eid Adul Fitr, Eid Ul Adha, Ramadan, etc. Now we can see the sacred literature. Another important structure of the religion is sacred literatures. The theological explanation of religion when it takes the written form becomes sacred literature. In other words, the sacred scriptures of religion represent its sacred literature. Every religion has its own sacred literature. The essential principles and the theological explanations of religion in general are incorporated in its sacred literature. This literature has great survival value. The Vedas, Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita and Epic are the sacred scriptures of Hinduism. Bible is the central religious authority in Christianity and similarly the Quran for Islam, Triptikas in the sacred scriptures of Buddhism and so on. Every religion will have its own religious sacred literature. Now we can see the next structure that is the myth. Myth refers to an ancient traditional story of gods or heroes, especially the one offering an explanation of some fact or phenomenon. It has been said that myth is primitive philosophy, the simplest presentational form of thought, a series of attempts to understand the world, to explain life and death, fate and nature, god and cults. As Melinowski says, Myths are statements of reality, products of the living faith, intimately connected with word and deed. Myth is also a complex kind of human claim. 
it is not only a logical assertion but also a dramatic one that incorporates one's feelings attitudes and sentiments it is an emotional affirmation of a man's place in and solidarity with the world that has meaning for him myth is also a structure found in the religion which helps individuals relate to their environment ancestors descendants and beyond to express man's solidarity with his world the next one is mysticism the practice or inclination of religious thinking and feeling among individuals who seek out direct communication with god or the divine is known as mysticism some people's religious lives transformed into a purely personal and inward experience as a result of mysticism as a result a mystic is someone who strives for or achieves a direct connection with god through intense religious experience or ecstasy he aspires to transcend all manifestations of the universe including those found in the natural and social environment as well as in organized cults the major world faiths including christianity buddhism hinduism judaism and even islam have a mystic response now we can see the functions of religion imam darkheim's work emphasized the benefits of religion for society regardless of how it is practiced or whose particular religious belief as culture prefers the ideas of durkheim still have an impact on contemporary sociological thought about the role of religion in light of durkheim's observations today sociologists consider still how religion functions in society now we can see the functions of religion in society life has meaning and purpose because of religion many things in life are challenging to comprehend even in today's highly scientific society many aspects of life and death remain a mystery which was undoubtedly the case in ancient times too Many people use their religious faith and beliefs to make sense of the things that science is unable to explain. Religion strengthens social cohesion and stability. One of Durkheim's most significant insight was this: social stability is strengthened by religion in at least two ways. We can see what are they. It provides people with a shared set of beliefs, making it a vital socialization agent. the second one is the collaborative practice of religion such as places of worship builds social ties by physically bringing people together and facilitating social interactions and communication as well as other forms of social contact which strengthen social bonds the third function of religion is that it remains an agent of social control and thus strengthen social order religion teaches people moral principles values and behavior so assisting them in becoming morally good members of society for instance the 10 commandments in the judeo christian tradition are the most prominent collection of guidelines for moral conduct fourth function of religion is greater psychological and physical well-being is related to religion Religious belief and practice can improve psychological health by providing solace in difficult times and by fostering social engagement with others at places of worship. Several studies show that being religious makes people of all ages, not just the elderly, happier and more pleased with their life. The next function is religion may inspire and motivate people to work for constructive social change a few decades ago the southern civil rights movement was heavily influenced by religion and thus religion can motivate people to social change in a positive direction now we have seen the sociological understanding of religion to sum up in this module of sociological understanding of religion we have dealt with the fundamental aspects of religion from the sociological perspective As one of the primary social institutions, religion plays a significant role in society. To start with, we saw what religion is and how it is viewed in sociology. 
the basic components of the religion above which the religious institution was built are also discussed. As an institution, religion has its own structure and functions. Those are also deliberated. In the course of this model, we also have drawn insights from various religions to get a better understanding of religion. Thank you.